Hello there. Every so often on YouTube, a video pops up with the title Dead Game. Yeah. The thumbnail usually has a derpy face and a gravestone beside it, or better yet, a red line which gradually goes down, declaring your favourite game is over and you should move on. So I wanted to figure out what makes a game dead, what signs can be seen and how they can be avoided from Fortnite to Overwatch, from Fall Guys to Multiverses. Are they all really dying games? And who makes that decision? For online games like Battle Royales and MMOs, there's a single metric used to determine how popular a game is. Concurrent player numbers. How many players are playing this month, this week, this day, and even this hour? And that data gives us headlines like these. Marvel's Avengers has lost 96% of its players since launch. The end. Multiverses has already lost more than 90% of its players on Steam. Fortnite pros are quitting the game at an unprecedented rate. Destiny 2 records lowest player count ever. Do these headlines mean these games are destined to die? Well, no, but for some, these headlines are the start of a real decline. A game is only dead when the lights go out. Usually the game's Twitter account stops posting for months. The servers are then given a shutdown date and the developers move on to something new. The latest two games to be officially dead games are Scavengers and Splitgate. We're ending feature development of Splitgate. Scavengers never even made it to console. RIP. As more games want to live forever and constantly defy the life and death cycle of video games, let's look at the games with their heads on the chopping block. Games which I really enjoy, which have the label of dying game. What can be done to keep them alive? All right then, you're with me. Multiverses. Multiverses arrived in early access in July last year, a platform fighter filled with legendary DC characters and iconic Warner Brothers properties. It has fun mechanics with every character owning their own unique set of moves, and it was heavily praised on release and openly discussed in the same conversation as the daddy of platform fighters, Smash Bros. Everyone I knew jumped on to try it, over 20 million downloads in the first month alone. Multiverses promised us the world, with ranked game modes coming soon, new characters regularly introduced and a battle pass to keep a steady flow of content to come back for. Many of us were addicted, it seemed like Multiverses was a destined hit for years. Fast forward 6 months and the picture tells a different story. Currently the main issue with Multiverses is exposure. I honestly know players who forgot this game even exists. Marketing is pivotal to maintaining an audience. Right now the game's director is the only official hype man and the community is doing what it can to carry things along. I wish that was the only issue but scratch the surface and more appear. An unreliable and laggy online experience, poorly defined hitboxes in a fighter, a lack of ranked mode, a mediocre battle pass, an overpriced storefront and this really annoying dog. Okay the last one, the last one is just a me issue, sorry about that. The thing is Multiverses isn't officially out yet. The reason the game doesn't know how to market itself is because because we're still in early access. My fear is people won't come back to see the finished article. It's such a shame too, as the level of detail and thought put into each character and their moveset is simply sublime. Is Multiverses a dying game? The stats and issues I've outlined say yes, but with the might of DC and Warner Brothers behind it and the skill of the developers, the story isn't over yet. A game which has already fallen this year is Spellbreak an elemental magic inspired battle royale. The idea was amazing and the first few games really showed us that magical elements combined with BR worked. Released back in 2018, things looked promising but after four years, one main issue stood out. The game never evolved. Limited weapon pools, no real variety of choice, Spellbreak could not offer content updates at the same quality and regularity as its peers. And if I'm honest, I think it released too soon. Technically it was ready, don't get me wrong, but the core elements of gameplay had not been refined enough to understand why people would want to keep coming back. Spellbreak does hold the honour of being the first game to ever release on console and PC with fully implemented crossplay on day one. And it had 10 million players, and for an indie game I don't think that can be called a failure. A real question was why would anyone play this battle royale over the other countless battle royales on the market? So the cold hard reason Spellbreak died was down to its competition and the saturation of battle royales available. Spellbreak is gone, but not forgotten. 
And it happened again. Marvel's Avengers is officially halting all support and delisting the game from stores later this year. This one is much easier to diagnose what happened compared to other games. The review scores for Marvel's Avengers saw the game as mediocre at the very best, and as a live service which asked players to log in each day, it was a complete failure. In my opinion, the downfall was because of the core mechanics quickly becoming boring. The cool stuff we did in the single player campaign were non-existent in the online portion. Repeating the same missions to slowly improve gear, fighting the same enemies over and over, using the same weaponry endlessly, grinding the same way day in day out. Marvel's Avengers also outlines a key difference about PvE and PvP. AI is predictable, and only real people in PvP matches can truly make each encounter feel unique. I'll miss Marvel's Avengers, but I think I may be the only one. Overwatch 2 you may be wondering why one of the biggest games to ever exist is on this list of potentially dying games. Well, I'll get straight to the point. Overwatch 2 should not be a sequel. The plan was to release a full PvE mode alongside Overwatch's iconic multiplayer modes. It all made sense. The lore of Overwatch is quite compelling. The world building, the character design, the core game modes are all well made and presented. And that led to countless players who enjoy the world of Overwatch, but they don't like PvP game modes. You can't blame them. Who wants to jump online to get stomped by other players and then be targeted by their own teammates in chat? So by releasing a PvE mode, those players would come to the game and spend their money. But it never arrived. We are now told that Overwatch will release portions of its PvE campaign over the next year. But wait, Overwatch faces more issues. The removal of its frowned upon loot boxes has seen the introduction of a lackluster battle pass and one of the most overpriced cash grab storefronts I've ever seen in gaming. On top of that, Overwatch changed McCree to Cassidy as the OG character was named after a dev who took part in workplace sexual harassment. Untie me, McCree! <laughs> Allegedly. The issues keep coming, as the new characters are part of the battle passes, essentially putting them behind a paywall for at least half the season. And the cynical players who've been around say that this is a pay to win mechanic, as it's regularly seen that new characters are deliberately made a little bit too strong to incentivize players to want to be them. So if the best character is only available through the battle pass, you're either going to buy the battle pass, completely give up on the game, or become very cynical. That battle pass is a nest of poor decisions. This season, one of the items from the battle pass was taken straight out and thrown in the store to be sold for real money instead. I kind of miss the days of loot boxes. Overwatch may not get the playtime it once did, but it will never be a dead game. This month alone, at least 23 million people logged on. Dead game? Not quite yet. Fall Guys is the most unique game given the mantle of Dead Game. The game show version of Battle Royale was a massive hit thanks to unbelievable creator support on platforms like Twitch and YouTube and by releasing on PlayStation Plus. Technically, it was a free game. And this came out at the time when lockdown was a very real reality for many of us. But as the months rolled on and the very limited number of levels began to take their toll, people began to leave. But unlike other games, Fall Guys adapted, finally going free to play across all platforms, allowing Xbox and Switch players to finally play, and the numbers rocketed once again. New content arrived, not much, but there is some. New seasons arrived, and in July last year, Fall Guys had 50 million downloads. 50 million, and yet many people still call this a dead game. And that brings us to Fortnite, the game which sees the most dead game declarations in my comment section. I'll be honest, I do think Fortnite's best days are behind it in terms of player numbers, and I do expect more people to play less every year. But Fortnite is far from dying. In fact, it has a plan to stay on top. Let's go through all the issues we've outlined in this video so far to see how it compares. Marketing. I think we can all agree it's tough to avoid Fortnite when on social media. Solid Battle Pass! Absolutely! Offering the premium currency inside the Battle Pass to buy skins in the store makes buying them a no-brainer. And on top of that, there is always something unique in the Battle Pass every single time. Frequent Content Updates Well, back in the old days, we had weekly updates and they were amazing. Right now, the same can't be said, but more often than not, we have two new items brought into the game every single month. 
competition. Fortnite has fought to stay on top before offering a free battle pass when Apex Legends look to be the battle royale of choice, and Epic regularly looks at their competition and ruthlessly plans things to overshadow them constantly. They know how to fight. And finally, the one that really matters, genre fatigue. This is an interesting one. We've been playing for five years constantly. And at some point, people get sick of being the last person to survive. Battle Royale is coming to the end of its dominance cycle. And once again, Epic has a solution. Creative 2.0, a system that allows players to build and create the game modes they want with ease. Essentially making the entire community games designers. Fortnite will break from its shackles as a battle royale and evolve into any genre imaginable. Minecraft and Roblox have shown the way and Fortnite have now seen the light. And that helps us sum up the video. The ultimate reason why games die is because we've all had enough and we move on to the next big thing. All games will die, but some will survive longer than others. I'm Adam, you're awesome, I'll see you next time.